Hello everybody. So in the previous lectures we have uh, discussed about uh, elasticity and uh, elasticity is nothing but uh, the property of a body by which it can regain its original configuration when the deforming force is removed. Okay, so let me just uh, uh, show you again uh, by taking the example of a spring. Alright, so let's say we have a spring like this. Okay, so that is a spring. Now this is an empty spring in which uh, you don't have any load uh, attached to the spring. So we, we know that if we pull the spring downward, okay, by attaching some load, let's say. Let's say we have a small load out here. Now this body will have a weight and the weight of the body is acting downward. So the weight will pull the body down. All right, and because of that, the spring will stretch. Yes or no? It will stretch. Let me come one, two, three, four, five, six. So now it will stretch. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the body will come a little bit down here. Understand? So it is uh, understood from logic that the the greater the i mean the the bigger the mass of the body the bigger the mass of the body the more will be the stretching of the spring okay now what will happen if we withdraw this body if we detach this body if we uh, take out if we take it out from the spring this point is where there is no body so that is the position where the spring comes Okay, it comes up to that level. Let me just uh, draw this level for your understanding. So let's say this is the level that the spring comes when uh, nothing is attached to its end. But when a small body is attached to its end, the body comes to this level. The spring, it stretches by a small amount. Okay. Now if you take out this body, if you detach this body, do you agree or not that the spring will go back to the same level A? Let's say this is level A and this is level B, right? It will go back to the same level A. Why does that happen? Because there is a force acting opposite to the deforming force called the restoring force Fr, right? So the role of the, of the uh, restoring force is to bring back the original configuration of the spring. So this is true for all elastic bodies. I've just shown you an example using a spring, but that is true for all elastic bodies. Okay, it is true for a rubber band, it is true for a rubber, it is, it is true for an iron wire also. Got it? Now let us do one thing. Let us uh, attach a bigger body. Do you agree or not that if you attach a bigger body, since the body now will be heavier, it, the, the spring will go lower? Yes, so now the spring will, will stretch some more. Okay, so let's say now the body is a bigger body. Understand? So the deforming force, which is the weight in this case, the deforming force now is larger. Understand? But uh, if you take out this, this uh, body, if you detach it, the spring will again go back to the same position, A. Why? Because the spring is still elastic. All right. Uh, can you do this to an infinite, uh, uh, to a body of infinite mass? What will happen? Suppose you have a very large body. Okay, you have a very large body. So, do you think that uh, the spring will always regain its original configuration, however large the body is, when the uh, when the deforming force is withdrawn? That is the question. So. It is found that if there is an, an upper limit, there is an upper limit in which the spring will not be able to regain its original configuration. Okay, there is an upper limit. Beyond the limit, if you stretch further beyond the limit, the spring now will be permanently deformed. Understand? Now it has the property of plasticity, not elasticity anymore. Are you getting the idea? So that upper limit of the deforming force, there is, a, the, there is a, the maximum limit of deforming force 
beyond the limit if you exert more deforming force then the spring will not be able to go back to its original length that means the spring has lost its elasticity i think that is uh, that is clear yes or no if you wear your elastic shorts or pants all right so for so long then it becomes loose the 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 elastic becomes loose it loses its elasticity understand so this means from here we understand that there is a highest limit of the deforming force fd right within this highest limit if you withdraw the body then it will go back to the original configuration but beyond that deforming force beyond that highest limit it will not go back to the original configuration understand and that maximum limit of the deforming force is known as elastic elastic limit okay so what is that elastic limit let us have a look so basically elastic limit is the upper limit of the deforming force within which the body is elastic that means it regains its original configuration and beyond which the body gets permanently deformed according to this law within elastic limit the stress developed is directly proportional to the strain produced in the body that is stress is proportional to strain all right or stress by strain is constant and that constant we denoted with e where e is a constant of proportionality known as the coefficient of elasticity and uh, since there are different types of stress and different types of strain so also mm -hmm. e will have will be of different types let us look at the modulus of elastic elast the different modulus of elasticity one by one so the first uh, modulus of elasticity is called the young's modulus of elasticity and is denoted by capital y it is defined as the ratio of normal stress to longitudinal strain that is y is equal to normal stress divided by longitudinal strain but then the normal stress we know that it is equal to force by area divided by and longitudinal strain is delta l divided by l what is delta l out here delta l here is the the change in length and small l here is the original length all right so here you have uh, f into l by a into delta l okay but then mostly what happen is if you look at the wire the wire is mostly in the shape of a cylinder let's say you have a wire like this a small wire okay which is uh, hung from a rigid support okay some something like this now if you look at this uh, end of the wire here this is like a small cylinder where it has a small area of cross section out here all right so there is a small area of cross section out here and this a here is actually the area of cross section of this wire and uh, the area of a circle we know very well what is the area of a circle that is pi r square into delta l since area of cross section is pi r square all right and what is r here r here is the radius of the wire what is the unit of the um, uh, young's modulus of elasticity so obviously here the longitudinal strain has no unit so therefore the unit of y will be that of normal stress and its unit is how much its unit its unit is newton per meter square or pascal okay so that is the first uh, modulus of elasticity let us go to the second one the second modulus of elasticity is known as the bulk modulus number 2 bulk modulus of elasticity this is denoted by k 
Okay, let's do one thing. Instead of uh, going to the bulk modulus now, let us first uh, discuss. Uh, we'll talk some more in detail about the Young's modulus. Okay, we will do this number two in a while. All right, so Young's modulus, we have seen that it is nothing but the ratio of the uh, normal stress to the longitudinal strain and we obtained the expression of the Young's modulus that's the expression okay so let me put this inside of a box okay so let's say this is this one is y got it all right so let's look at the Young's modulus of uh, different uh, materials for example uh, for example, the Young's modulus of uh, aluminium, Al, this is around 70 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square. Young's modulus of copper, this is around 110 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square. Young's modulus of steel. This is very large. It is of the. Uh, it is around two hundred ten to the power nine newton per meter square. Uh, Young's modulus of wood. This is around uh, thirteen into ten to the power nine newton per meter square, etc. Okay. So one thing we should note that. Uh, Young's modulus of elastic elasticity is involved only, only in solids. That means liquids and gases does not have Young's modulus of elasticity. And uh, another thing, the greater the Young's modulus, the greater, the greater the value of y let's just put it that way okay the greater the value of y more elastic more elastic is the body okay so if you look at this uh, 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 these values out here steel is more elastic than copper copper is more elastic than aluminum so on and so forth is that clear? Okay, so now let us go to the second one, which is the bulk modulus of uh, elasticity. The bulk modulus of elasticity is defined as the ratio of normal stress to volumetric strain. That is, K is equal to normal stress divided by volumetric strain. All right, and uh, normal stress here is just like before, force divided by area and the volumetric strain is change in volume delta v divided by original volume v okay and here you will get uh, uh, f f um, f by a then you'll get a v out here and you'll get a delta v out here all right now what is f by a f by a here we can uh, replace this by pressure p Okay, so basically you will get PV by delta V. Now in this particular expression, you have to introduce a minus sign out here. All right, now what is the meaning of this minus sign? You see here, if you have a body, if you have a body, let's say a body like this, and what you're doing to this body is you are applying, pre you are, are applying pressure in all directions, from all directions. Okay, I'm just drawing. Okay, let us draw some more. So we are applying the force like this, which is perpendicular to the surface of the body. So because of that, what will happen? Imagine this to be the original volume of the body. So if you press in all directions like this, do you agree or not that the body will now become smaller in size do you agree or not it'll, it'll become smaller in size just redo this nicely uh -huh.
something like this okay so now this is the new volume of the body all right that's a new volume of the body and what is the change in volume of the body the change in volume is this part this part is the change in volume of the body you see that is what delta v so if you press the body from all sides from all directions like this the body reduces in its volume it becomes smaller the greater the pressure that you apply the more it will reduce you understand or not so as as you increase the pressure the volume decreases so that is the reason why we put a minus sign out here is it clear so this is the expression for the bulk modulus of elasticity okay and again what is the unit for bulk modulus bulk modulus will have the same unit as as the normal stress which is newton per meter square all right now this bulk modulus let me write a note okay the bulk modulus is uh, is involved in solids it is involved in solids liquids and gases okay that's one thing uh, the value of bulk modulus and Young's modulus for a perfectly rigid body so the value of Y and K for a perfectly rigid body is infinite all right so let us look at the various uh, values uh, the, the k for k for uh, let's say aluminum here this is uh, 72 into 10 to the power uh, 9 newton per meter square k for um, uh, copper is uh, 140 into 10 to the power 9 newton per meter square uh, bulk modulus of water this is uh, 2.2 .2 into 10 to the power 9 newton per meter square uh, bulk modulus of of gas this is around uh, gas or air this is around 1 into 10 to the power minus 4 newton uh, 10 to the power minus 4 new sorry newton per meter square so on and so forth this is at stp And the third uh, modulus of elasticity is called the modulus of rigidity. It is defined as the ratio of tangential stress to the shearing strain. It is also called the shear modulus of elasticity. It is denoted by eta. So eta here is tangential stress divided by the shearing strain. And we know that tan tangential stress is given by F by A. And shearing strain is already obtained before delta L by L. So this is the expression for the modulus of uh, rigidity and uh, what will be the unit of modulus of rigidity same as the unit for the stress that would be newton per meter square all right so a few notes out here the modulus of rigidity is involved is involved with with solids only Okay, so that means liquids and gases, they do not have the value of eta. All right, and uh, the modulus of rigidity of, of an ideal liquid, of an ideal liquid is zero. So, so some of the values of uh, eta for the various uh, substances for aluminum, it is around 25 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square for copper copper this is around 42 into 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square for steel eta for steel this is around 84 10 to the power 9 Newton per meter square for tungsten 
This is around 150 into 10 to the power 9 newton per meter square. All right, so those are the three different moduli of elasticity, and you have to learn them nicely. Thank you.